six months after Governor Robert Bentley admitted to having inappropriate conversations with his top aide, Rebecca Mason, we're getting our first look at the tax returns for the mysterious organization known as Ace Gov that was rumored to be linked to dark money. News 5's Emily DeVoe has been pouring over the tax records and joins us now live in the newsroom with what she uncovered. Emily. Well, Roseanne, AceGov really came under scrutiny in the wake of the governor's scandal back in March. And since then, we've asked several times for the tax returns. We were told they filed an extension and we'd have to wait. So we did. And finally tonight, we'll, we're able to see exactly how much money was flowing through the organization and where it was going. In short, it's not as daunting as a lot of people speculated, but there are still quite a few questions. AceGov has been one of the biggest unknowns about the scandal surrounding Governor Robert Bentley because it formed rather quickly to promote his tax agenda and disappeared without a trace as soon as the scandal broke. But we're finally peeling back the layers, learning more about the group that raised so many questions. Roughly $90,000. That's how much they raised last year, but the tax forms don't disclose a single donor. That's because 501c4 nonprofits aren't required to do so. In the grand scheme of things, $90,000 is a relatively small amount of money. But if you look at the records, it's divided up between conferences, web development, polling, agent fees, and fundraising. But look closer at the web development line. The roughly 22,000 for web development, mostly going to Rebecca Mason's firm. It may not look unusual, but if you flash back to a letter sent to the State Ethics Commission about creating the organization in the first place, it claims Mason was serving as an unpaid volunteer advisor for the governor. But records show she was actually making roughly $5,000 a month at the time from the governor's campaign fund. We reached out to the Ethics Commission for a comment, but have yet to hear back. The tax forms also show AceGov had roughly $27,000 left over at the end of 2015, but those funds could get sucked up into court costs as the group is still named a defendant in whistleblower Spencer Collier's wrongful dismissal suit. Live in the newsroom, Emily DeVoe, News 5.